Okay, there we are. So we have our lovely wok. Here we go with that. I'm also going to throw a little bit. I'm weird, but I bought this in bulk. And it's basically like a quinoa rice couscous. I'm just going to throw a little bit in on the side. Give me a little bit of the goodness of the protein from the quinoa. quality. So we've got our rice here in one side of the pan with our quinoa and couscous, couscous, whatever you want to call it. I'm going to just cook this here on a pretty high heat. I'm also going to throw in, this is actually like a poultry seasoning. I'm just going to throw it in to flavor the steak. And I'm going to throw in some asafoetida because if I don't have this in any of my food, my stomach gets kind of sick. So if you have trouble with upset stomach, which I mentioned I have to go get some more of this later today, you should definitely check out asafoetida. It makes it so you can eat without any difficulties, which for some of us is a little tricky. And I just, on a hydrangea, it decided to shed all over. So anyway, we're going to need that, and that is that. I'm also going to add, once we cook this down a little bit, these absolutely beautiful, 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 actually I think I'm just going to add them now. These are some lovely sweet potato fries, which are pre-cooked, and I'm just going to go on the side. And I normally don't eat this much, but I've already, it's not even halfway through the morning. Well, it's a little over halfway through the morning, but we haven't quite reached lunch yet. And I've already walked about 10,000 steps because I had to go to the doctors and to groceries. And um, this one thing led to another. So even though I'm trying to kind of have a calm day, because it is, again, the Feast of Unleavened Bread and kind of try to take it a little easy and listen to lectures during that day, but sometimes uh, life happens, and this was one of those days. So I'm going to eat really well for my lunch because I ate oatmeal for breakfast, and oatmeal is only so filling. So yeah, this is going to be delicious. I'm going to turn up the heat a little more and I'm going to wipe off my thing because I got some extra from when I made matzos on me. This also works great for making matzo, by the way, or nan bread, which is kind of weird because you wouldn't think because it has these curved sides it would be perfect for that, but it works really well, peeps. I'm just saying, if you haven't got a wok yet, go out and buy one now. I know I debated it for about three months and then I thought, you know... I've got a high holy day coming up. It's going to be a major holiday. I might as well splurge on something that I really like for this holiday. And for me, that was a wok and hydrangea and two houseplants and tapioca pudding. Yeah, okay. But yeah, so that was my splurge for the holiday. Oh, and I bought a bunch of new clothes. But yeah, there we go. So we've got our steak on the wok. I'm using the tongs because it flips, you have much more control over flipping the steak with much less mess. And I don't know where my apron went. I really don't. I do have one, but it's gone. So anyway, I'm just going to kind of cover it like that. Keep the heat in. While I'm waiting, I'm going to, this is a clean glass. It just happens to be in the sink.
I'm really into flavored water, so I literally, I know these look like little liquor containers, but they're actually little flavored water containers. And this is cucumber flavoring made from natural flavor. It's zero calorie. And I don't like drinking cold water. I don't know why. So usually I either go with a flavoring like that. Sometimes I'll pick a fruit flavoring, but usually my go-to is this. It is a special flavoring I kind of order in. It's a sweet tea, but it's zero calorie. It works great with everything. You can also, if you like pop, but you don't want the calories, I will sometimes fill my glass with like literally a quarter cup of like Coke or Pepsi, Dr. Pepper, fill it with two drops of this and then water and it tastes like you're having real pop, which you're not, which is wonderful, I'm just saying. And we're just gonna stir this a little bit. The main thing about steak is I'm not really good at cooking steak. Bob was always ideal at cooking steak. I mean, she cooked steak since she was like literally 12 years old and she was exceptionally good with that. But I'm not living with Bob now, so because of that, I'm cooking my own steak. And my own steak is kind of weird. I will either cook it on the stove like this in plenty of liquid to keep it soft, or I will do the oven bake method where I would take a cookie sheet. I will take smaller steaks that are a little thinner are like half these steaks, but I'd still go smaller and thinner if I were you in the stove, in the oven. I put them on a cookie sheet with a little bit of parchment paper, and then I put spices, asafoetida, and then I put butter on the top, a pat of butter on each steak. And then, this is not good if you're kosher, just saying, so you might not want to do that if you're kosher. Then you, in the middle of cooking, I flip them over. You could use coconut oil instead like put a little bit of coconut oil on your steak. But then I flip them about probably 15, 15 minutes into cooking. And then I recover them with herbs and spices and recover them with butter. Just to give them a really flavorful taste. Um, I've had many people try those steaks. They absolutely love them. And honestly, it's so much easier than me trying to go out and use a grill, which I don't have one, number one. Number two, my moments with grills have been kind of frightening because I grew up in houses with grills that would go poof and burn your steak. And needless to say, I don't like playing with fire. And because of that, I tend to try to do everything on the stove top or the oven, one of the two. I also understand you can do like baked steak in the Instapot. If you want to go grab a recipe for that, that's really quick and easy. I don't have an Instapot at this point in time because I don't really need one. They're kind of an expensive appliance and if I did get one I would get the larger one because I did have a, what would you call it, like the one that you buy for a smaller household. I had a family member get extremely burned by that. It completely blew up basically and because of that I'm really not I'm going to go out and buy one of those small ones again. And I don't need the larger one. Everything I can do, I can usually cook my meal in less than, if I really want to, 15 minutes on my stovetop or, you know, in my oven or make it ahead of time and then just reheat it. And so I don't really see the need at this point in time for an Instapot. Now, at some point, I might indeed find a really good reason. Like, no offense, I'm maybe going to have some people come move in with me and if my household goes to like, you know, six people, then it might be really nice to have a giant rice cooker instead of the little one that I have. But for right now, I don't really see the need for that. So again, you do you, but for me, I just say everything I need to cook can pretty much be cooked, you know, on the stovetop or in the oven. And you know, it is true, life, the Howl Zoo was right. Life consists in the elimination of non-essentials. And for me, I mean, my main appliances that I have, I don't even have a toaster, I just use a cookie sheet, because I'm really not into toasters. I mean, I used to collect vintage ones, I have them somewhere. But anyway, I do like having a coffee grinder so I can grind my own beans. And I also like having a coffee maker. And I love my little rice cooker and my ramen noodle maker. I'm just going to show you guys because it is like uh, so awesome. I know ramen isn't particularly necessarily the healthiest thing, but yep. Yeah. This is my ramen noodle cooker and I got him for literally like the equivalent of two US dollars and I absolutely love him. I'm just saying.
even though he is pink. So we've got this going. It's going to be delicious. This is going to taste kind of like, for those of you who are familiar with the, um, what do they call it? Corned beef. This is going to taste a little like a corned beef steak because it's going to have the tenderizing effect of the vi vinegar from the dill. And it's also going to have the flavor from that. steak is I think I'm going to check it here on the plate okay we're still bloody so we're going to be cooking the steak a while longer because Anna does not like the meat to be bloody you might have to add a little liquid to the steak area here there we go I'm going to remove these so they don't cook till they're completely done. So there's our delicious thing. Now I'm also going to pull this out as well. So all we really have left in the pan is indeed the steak. I'm going to cover my plate with a lid just to keep it warm because it will be plenty warm enough to eat. And I'm going to turn my steak up to really high. And just let it simmer.
bottle has a fish in given its all. As we can see now, the steak is cooked. And I'm going to gather up the remainder of the quinoa rice thingy. 